welcome to the Royals Project YouTube channel. Please feel free to check out all of our character videos and let us know if you have any cool ideas on things characters could do in a video. Hello everyone, I'm Princess Belle and I am back with R.L. Stein's Stay Out of the Basement and I am starting with Chapter 9. Kids, it's okay, Dr. Brewer called. He bent down quickly, picked up the baseball cap, and replaced it on his head. A crow flew low overhead, cawing loudly. Margaret raised her eyes to follow the bird, but the sight of the hideous leaves sprouting from her father's head wouldn't go away. Her whole head began to itch as she imagined what it must feel like to have leaves and curling from your scalp. It's okay, really, Dr. Brewer repeated, hurrying over to them. But Dad, your head. Casey stammered. He suddenly looked very pale. Margaret felt sick. She kept swallowing hard, trying to ride out the waves of nausea. Come here, you two, their father said softly, patting an arm around each of their shoulders. Let's sit down in the shade over there and have a talk. I spoke to your mom on the phone this morning. She said, she told me you're upset about my work. Your head, it's all green, Casey repeated. I know, Dr. Brewer said, smiling. That's why I put on my on the cap. I didn't want you two to worry. He led them to the shade of the tall hedges that ran along the garage, and they sat down on the grass. I guess you two think your dad has gotten pretty weird, huh? He stared into Margaret's eyes. Feeling uncomfortable, she looked away. Calling frantically, the crow flew over again, heading in the other direction. Margaret, you haven't said a word, her father said, squeezing her hand tenderly between his. What's wrong? What do you want to say to me? Margaret sighed and still avoided her father's glance. Come on, tell us. Why do you have leaves growing out of your head? She asked bluntly. It's a side effect, he told her, continuing to hold her hand. It's only temporary. It'll go away soon and my hair will grow back. But how did it happen? Casey asked, staring at his father's daughter's cap. A few green leaves poked out from under the brim. Maybe you two would feel better if I explain what I'm trying to do down in the basement, Dr. Brewer said shifting the weight and leaning back on his hands. I've been so wrapped up in my experiments, I haven't had much time to talk to you. You haven't had any time, Margaret corrected him. I'm sorry, he said, lowering his eyes. I really am. But this work I'm doing is so exciting and so difficult. Did you discover a new kind of plant? Casey asked, crossing his legs beneath him. No, I'm trying to build a new kind of plant, Dr. Brewer explained. Huh? Casey exclaimed. Have you ever talked about DNA in school? Their father asked. They shook their heads. Well, it's pretty complicated, he continued. Dr. Brewer thought for a moment. Let me try and put it in simple terms, he said, fiddling with the bandage around his hand. Let's say we took a person who had a very high IQ, you know, real brain power. Like me, Casey interrupted. Casey, shut up, Margaret said edgily. A real brain like Casey, Dr. Brewer said agreeably. And let's say we were able to isolate the molecule or gene or a tiny part of a gene that enabled the person to have such high intelligence. And then let's say we were able to transmit it to a brain. And then this brain power could be passed along from generation to generation. And lots of people who have a high IQ, do you understand? He looked first at Casey, then at Margaret. Yeah, kind of, Margaret said. You take a good quality from one person and put it into an other people. And then they have the good quality too, and they pass it on to their children and on and on. Very good, Dr. Brewer said, smiling for the first time in weeks. That's what a lot of botanists do with plants. They try to take the fruit-bearing building block from one plant and put it onto the other. Create a new plant that will bear five times as much fruit, or five times as much grain, or vegetables. And that's what you're doing? Casey asked. Not exactly, their father said, lowering his voice. I'm doing something a little more unusual. I really don't want to go into detail now, but I'll tell you what I'm trying to do is build a kind of plant that has never existed and could never exist. I'm trying to build a plant that's part animal. Casey and Margaret stared at their father in surprise. Margaret was the first to speak. You mean you're taking cells from an animal and putting them into a plant? He nodded. I really don't want to say more. You two understand why this must be kept secret. He turned his eyes on Margaret, then Casey, studying their reactions. 
How do you do it? Margaret asked, thinking hard about everything he had just told them. How do you get these cells from the animals to the plant? I'm trying to do it by breaking them down electronically, he answered. I have two glass booths connected by a powerful electron generator. You may have seen them when you were snooping around down there, he made a sour face. Yeah, they look like photo booths, Casey said. One booth is a sender and one is a receiver, he explained. I'm trying to send the right DNA, the right building blocks, from one booth to the other. It's a very delicate work. And have you done it? Margaret asked. I've come very close, Dr. Brewer said, a pleased smile crossing his face. The smile lasted only a few seconds. Then his expression, thoughtful, he, he abruptly climbed to his feet. Got to get back to work, he said quietly. You two later. He started walking across the lawn, taking long strides. But Dad, Margaret called after him. She and Casey climbed to their feet too. Your head, the leaves, he didn't explain it. She said as she and her brother hurried to catch up to him. Dr. Brewer shrugged. Nothing to explain, he said curtly. Just a side effect. He adjusted his Dodgers cap. Don't worry about it. It's only temporary. Just a side effect. Then he hurried into the house. Casey seemed really pleased by their dad's explanation of what was going on in the basement. Dad's doing really important work, he said, with unusual seriousness. But as Margaret made her way into the house, she found herself troubled by what her dad had said, and even more troubled by what he hadn't said. Margaret closed the door to her room and lay down on the bed to think about things. Her father hadn't really explained the leaves growing out of his head. Just a side effect, didn't explain much at all. A side effect from what? What actually caused it? What made his hair fall out? When will his hair grow back? It was obvious that he hadn't wanted to discuss it with them. He had certainly hurried back into the basement after telling them it was just a side effect. A side effect. It made Margaret feel sick every time she thought of it. What must it feel like? Green leaves pushing up from your pores and curling against your head. Yuck. Thinking about it made her itch all over. She knew she'd have hideous dreams tonight. She grabbed her pillow and hugged it over her stomach, wrapping her arms tightly around it. There were lots of other questions Casey and I should have asked, she decided. Like, why were the plants moaning down there? Why did some of them sound like they were breathing? Why did that plant grab Casey? What animal was Dad using? Lots of questions. Not to mention the one Margaret wanted to ask most of all. Why were you gulping down that disgusting plant food? But she couldn't ask that one. She couldn't let her dad know she'd been spying on him. She and Casey hadn't really asked any of the questions they'd wanted answered. They were just so pleased that their father had decided to sit down and talk with them, even for a few minutes. His explanation was really interesting, as far as it went, Margaret decided. And it was good to know that he was close to doing something truly amazing. Something that would make him really famous. But what about the rest of it? A frightening thought entered her mind. Could he have been lying to them? No, she quickly decided, no, Dad wouldn't lie to us. There are just some questions he hadn't answered yet. She was still thinking about all of these questions late that night. After dinner, after talking to Diane on the phone for an hour, after homework, after watching a little TV, after going to bed, and she was still puzzling over them. When she heard her father's soft footsteps coming up from the carpeted stairs, she sat up in bed. A soft breeze fluttered the curtains across the room. She listened to her father's footsteps pass her room, heard him go into the bathroom, heard the water begin to run into the sink. I've got to ask him, she decided. Glancing at the clock, she saw that it was 2.30 in the morning, but she realized she was wide awake. I've got to ask him about the plant food, otherwise it will drive me crazy. I'll think about it and think about it and think about it. Every time I see him, I'll picture him standing over the sink, shoveling handful after handful into his mouth. There's got to be a simple explanation, she told herself, climbing out of bed. There's got to be a logical explanation. And I have to know it. She padded softly down the hall, a sliver of light escaping through the bathroom door, which was slightly ajar. Water still ran into the sink. She heard him cough, then heard him adjust the water. I have to know the answer, she thought. I'll just have to ask him point blank. She stepped into the narrow triangle of light and peered into the bathroom. He was standing at the sink, leaning over it, his chest bare, his shirt tossed behind him on the floor. He had put the baseball cap on the closed toilet lid, and the leaves covering his head shone brightly under the bathroom light. Margaret held her breath. 
The leaves were so green, so thick. He didn't notice her. He was concentrating on the bandage on his hand. Using a small scissor, he cut the bandage, then pulled it off. The hand was still bleeding, Margaret saw. Or was it? What was that dripping from the cut on her father's hand? Still holding her breath, she watched him wash it off carefully under the hot water. Then he examined it. His eyes narrowed in concentration. After washing, the cut continued to bleed. Margaret stared hard, trying to better focus her eyes. It couldn't be blood, could it? It couldn't be blood dripping in the sink. It was bright green. <coughs> she gasped and started to run back to her room. The floor creaked under her footsteps. Who's there, Dr. Brew cried. Margaret? Casey? He poked his head into the hallway as Margaret disappeared back into her room. He saw me, she realized, leaning into bed. He saw me, and now he's coming after. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, you should check out the Royals Projects YouTube page and consider subscribing. If you shared this video, you'd be my hero. I gotta get back up there and start fighting crime. I'll catch you on the flip side.